is a fragile union between plant and animal. The animal, called a polyp, is provided with food by an algal plant that lives inside its body. This helps the polyp extract lime from the sea to make a skeleton of stone. As it dies, the skeleton becomes a foundation for future generations. At Lihu, monumental reefs hundreds of meters high were created this way over millions of years. But natural forces that stifle growth are an ever-present threat. At Lihu, we found bleached coral, where warm water has caused algae to leave the polyp, resulting in coral starvation and death. So we just finished two surveys at Lorna Cay in the north and Ann Cay in the south of uh, Lihu Reef. We've been looking at the corals and the fish. Um, we've just uh, found quite a big difference between Ann Cay and Lorna Cay. At Ann Cay there was a, a much higher abundance of corals but also a much higher diversity, different structural types. This is also reflected in the fish as well, a lot of the higher numbers and diversity of fish. In 1984 they did some uh, coral reef surveys at Lorna Cay and found 21% cover of corals. Now we're seeing about 7 to 15% cover. Um, this is probably due to bleaching events. We've had bleaching events in 2002, 2004 and possibly 2006. Consider how healthy your community would end up if all but 7% or 1 in 14 local services were closed down. This is what has happened to the fish communities at Lorna Cay. Charles Darwin, the father of the theory of evolution, wrote the first book on coral reef ecology in 1846. He forecast that changes in the condition of the sea, not obvious to our senses, might destroy the coral reefs in one area. 150 years later and the observations we made on Lihu Reef are being felt across the planet due to global warming.